first of all, I just want to congratulate you on the song and just the response that you guys you guys have gotten and um, Man, it's crazy how it blew up. It's it's so cool to watch that, and I think um, you know I think our country community is always so united, but it's mm-hmm. really awesome to see how united it's become through this. Yeah, you know, I, it's like music community always seems to rally around things. You know, just in well, I guess the music community has a voice, right? That you know maybe others don't. I, I kind of feel that way when I when I've seen other projects like this and other you know things like this go out. So I think um, when we started this, it was an idea that uh, would be to raise hopes, and we didn't really understand how we could help a community monetarily. We didn't know how we could raise money with it, mm-hmm. and then we thought, well just let's just give away the royalties you know <laughs> like, i mean that's that's what it's all about and then, and then getting other people to get involved is actually is actually the key to it and that's why right. we decided to make everything available so when did you guys think of this idea was it as soon as this all kind of started or had you had some time you know at home to think hey what can i do you know to kind of make an impact yeah, I don't know if we had a lot of time to think about it. I guess, I guess, really, we'd been under quarantine for maybe a week and a half, two weeks, mm-hmm. and that's when it really started to hit us that you know this is a you know COVID nineteen is a serious business, and mm-hmm. and watching the news and seeing uh, what was going on in our communities around the world, it it really sank in that um, you know people are are isolated, and then we thought the thing that's you know keeping us apart is actually bringing us closer together through social media, things like this, and, um, you know, Instagram, for instance, and just seeing the, the news stories about communities, uh, people singing on their balconies in, in Spain and, and yeah. Italy, you know, and then we thought, well, music is a, a really great uniter. So why is that, you know, and it's because we're no different in Spain than we are in Australia as we are in America, you know, yeah. uh, we're one, and that's what we are. So no matter where you're from, uh, we're all the same in a different community. So that was that was the that was the I guess the start of the the song, you know. Yeah, and I think that's the cool thing right now is that um, you know I don't think we've ever thought we would be able to relate so closely to someone on the other side of the world until mm-hmm. this happened. And then you know the song I think is such a good reminder of that, um, and also so cool that you had you know, not only part of our country, you know, community in there, but so many talented artists from Mm -hmm. all of the world. So how did that list come together of compiling who was going to be a part of it? And what were people's responses when you reached out? Uh, Well, it started off with the musicians. So the first guys I called were my, you know, Hammer Brothers, uh, Clay and Chris. And uh, Chris said he'd he'd, uh, play bass on it and sing and Clay did as well. And uh, then we got Greg Moore to play drums in Nashville and, and then uh, Darren Savard on guitar in British Columbia. So we already had this really cool geographically diverse, you know, rhythm section and, and lead section with the guitarist, Russ Broom, our producer in Calgary. So um, once we had that, that bed session, everybody recorded everything in isolation. I was sitting with my daughter, my daughter's uh, 13 years old, and I was talking to Grace. I said, I'd love to have a choir on this. It feels like it needs a, an actual choir, but how how could you do that in isolation there's no way <laughs> and uh i thought well maybe they can record their individual parts and then we were watching the news and it was just when new york had started to go into lockdown and it was just the epicenter of this whole thing and and still is to a great degree uh and i said the harlem gospel choir are amazing i saw them on tv perform at aretha franklin's funeral mm-hmm. and i thought they'd be the best and so she actually took it upon herself to find me the website and the contact info for them Good to have a young young girl around you to jump on and do that. Yeah, right. It showed me how this computer thing works. And and so she got me the contact info, and I sent an email in, and I, I thought, well, this is silly. There's no way they're going to get back to me. And 10 minutes later, I get a call from Anna Bailey, who's their, their manager, and, and she said, we think this is a, a beautiful message to send out to the rest of the world. And so they got working on their parts right away, uh, and then they sent them to us. We put them all together, and then after that, I, I – uh, I just started calling my country friends, uh, Haley Jensen in Australia, who uh, I'd written with a little bit, uh, Clay and I and, and Haley had written together. Uh, the Saltbush Six from down there, we toured with them with the Road Hammers last year. Yep. Um, and then it just went on from there. Our uh, Road Hammer producer, Scott in Nashville, played an organ on it. He hooked us up with Jessica Falk in uh, Sweden. Uh, my friend Jason Priestley, he hooked up uh, Ed 
Ed Robertson from Bare Naked Ladies. He said, man, I'd love to get in on this. So it was just a, it was, it was just a six degrees of separation thing. We didn't, we didn't try to get specific people on it. It just rolled. Like, what about so-and-so? Oh, they'd be perfect for this, you know? Um, Derek Rutan, Carolyn Don Johnson, who had worked with many times over the years, and uh, Tim Hicks, the Hunter Brothers, and, and the list just goes on and on. It, it, it's amazing. Such a, an amazing group of people. And no doubt that, you know, when you get reached out to about, especially during this time, it's like, you know, any way to be creative, I'm sure any artist is like, yes, I want to be a part of it. But when it's something so special, it's like, where do I sign up? How do I do it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a little daunting when you ask people like, you know, hey, would you be part of this thing? And, and you're not really sure how to describe it yet, you know, because when we were doing it from the time we wrote it to the time it was released was like 12 days. And so all I had was a, a little demo of me just playing guitar, you know, um, and you don't really, you don't want to send out anything that's less than really awesome to another musician, right? You're like, eh, well, this is, this is my idea. What do you think? And hopefully they hear it too. But, uh, you know, really they were listening with their hearts. It wasn't, it wasn't with their ears. And that's, that's kind of the way this thing's been rolling. Yeah. So, okay. The challenge. Now I feel like I have an idea of what we are supposed to be doing, but I want to make sure so that I don't make a fool of myself. So there's two <laughs> options you can do for the challenge for the, we are, um, one. Yeah. So you can do a photo mm -hmm. with where you are in the world and yeah. the hashtag, is that correct? Yeah. If you uh, take a photo of yourself holding the sign and that's what we want. We want to know what isolation looks or what life looks for, for you right, right then and there, you know, don't set it up, just grab a sign and do it. Um, so your, your town, your country, and then hashtag we are one world song. And the one is the numeral, just like the groovy hat. And, uh, and then hashtag that when you post it on your socials and we'll find you and share it in our community. Okay. And the other way is, uh, you know, if you want to sing or you uh, play an instrument or whatever, we have at our website, we are one world net, uh, dot net. We have all the tracks available for free. You just download them. It's like, an, there's an MP3 version, kind of like a, a karaoke version. Yeah. Uh, so you can sing along and then, you know, post that on YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, doesn't matter. And just hashtag us again. Uh, or if you're a little more tech savvy, you can download all the stems. So you know, the bass, drums, everything all broke out and remix it. We've had, we had a guy from China remix it. And this oh, was a couple cool. of weeks ago. So it was just as they were lifting their lockdown, you know, or thinking about it. And we had, uh, oh, we had a fella do um, a video. He's a, he's a puppeteer. So he's got all these puppet characters on this video that he did. He's, we've got kids playing ukuleles to it and doing their own version. So um, it's, it's amazing. And then, the, the most vulnerable sector of the uh, of, of our world is is uh, the elderly and all of this. And so we've had some retirement homes and nursing homes uh, get together and they've done music videos for this and we put it on our Facebook page and they're getting they're getting tons of views because a lot of people don't get the chance to see their family members. And here they are in a music video and yeah. and it's amazing. That's so awesome. Well, I've seen a few uh, come across my page and I just think it's so Awesome. I've seen people that I never would have expected to, you know, lip sync a song and do a music video. I'm like, this yeah. is amazing. So, okay, I will participate in the challenge. Um, awesome. but I wanted to be sure of the, the rules before the rules. doing so. Um, yeah. So I, I do want to play a little game with you because I feel like you're a pretty Canadian guy. Um, oh, yeah. You're a pretty proud Canadian. So this game actually was on Jimmy Fallon. And they, uh, he did it with Sandra O, oh, who is in Grey's Anatomy, and wow. she's also Canadian. So it's, is it Canadian? So I'm going to give you an item or an object or something that was invented, and you tell me if it was invented in Canada or not. Am I going to get kicked out of the country if I get <laughs> I don't think so. The uh. first one, though, I feel like you almost have to know this one because you have a song about it. So was the Zamboni created in Canada or not? No, it was invented in California in 1954 uh, to resurface the ice. And I know this because I wrote a song about it. <laughs> uh, to resurface the ice after an ice capade show. And then it was first used in the NHL. Or maybe it was first used in the NHL in 1954 by the Bruins. Good so, job. See, I'm proud of you. You can't write a song. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> you might know this one too. Um, right. Okay, was Hawaiian pizza created in Canada? Canada, St. Catharines, right? It was, Ontario. Yeah, that's home of Tim Hicks. See, all good things come from St. Catharines. There you go. See, you're way better at this than you thought. Okay, 
Uh, was flannel created in Canada or no? It, it should have been. Does that count? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to no. say yes, because it should have been. It was not. It was created in Wales in the 1600s. So, Come on. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Are you a sushi fan? A little you, bit. A little bit? Okay. The California roll, was it created in Canada or not? Oh, it's a trick question because it should be California, right? I'm going to have to say Canada. Good job. Yeah, it was in, invented in Vancouver and they called it the California roll because people from LA that were in Vancouver tour, like, tourists loved okay. it so much. So they, right, they well. okay, I, last one. Everybody knows I didn't know. <laughs> it was process of elimination. You're like, hmm. Okay. Um, okay, last one. Uh, peanut butter, was it created in Canada or not? Not. Something tells me. Is that European? It is Canadian. So peanut butter was in yes, Canadian? I know. I'm very proud of us for creating peanut butter. Um, All right. It was a Montreal pharmacist that created it because certain people weren't able to eat solid food, so they created peanut butter so they could still get nutrition. I had no idea. You're pretty good. I'm proud of you. Oh, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> yes. you're, you're, this, is like a, this is like a teaching session, too. You're like a See, teacher. There's so much homeschooling going on right now. I figured I'd help you out with that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you know, my wife does all the homeschooling, you. not me. No. <laughs> um, is I've seen you post a lot um, about your daughter who is into horseback riding, um, mm. which I grew up on a horse farm, my dad's a trainer and have ridden my whole life. So what is it like being the dad of a horse crazy girl? Uh, well, I'll tell you, it's, it's quite simple. You just go to work as much as you can, make as much money as you can and just throw it at the horse. <laughs> you know that. I know, I was like, he's got it exactly right. <laughs> no, it's great because, uh, and, and it's interesting, we were filming the uh, video for Homegrown with the Road Hammers in Nashville. There's a, uh, there's like a, a film ranch just out, I think it's just south of Franklin. And um, they just have weird things there, like some some beat up air streams and an old cabin. So they can film any kind of show there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we filmed a video there and they had a couple of horses. And my wife and daughter came out. My daughter was only two or three at the time. And it was the first time she'd ever seen a horse. And she cried and cried because she wanted to sit on the horse. And we said, uh -huh. uh, she must've been three. And we said, if you're good until the end of the day, we'll let you sit on the horse. And she was pleasant as punch all day. And at the end, she got a picture on the horse. And it's the first picture she it was ever on a horse. We took the picture and it's, uh, it's on her bedside table still. And she <laughs> has not stopped loving horses that in, intensely since. She I loves them. Believe it. It's it uh, for you. Oh yeah. I, well, I grew up with it just because of my dad, but um, I was really bad as a kid because when I was told no, I did not listen. And so I was probably three years old and we had a breeding farm. So we would have a lot of, you know, mares and babies in the field. Oh. And my mom, I would say, I'm going outside to play. And she'd go, okay, you can't go near the pond and you can't go in the fields. And I would go out in the field and lay down in the grass with all the baby horses. And my mom would be like, oh my God, what is she doing? <laughs> you know but, what? It's, it's a great way to grow up though. I think I love the fact that like, she's 13 now. And I love the fact that uh, the girls around the barn, you know, there's not, not a lot of drama that, that can happen in, in that age. Uh, and so they're, they're there at the barn, they're working and they're, they got a really great work ethic and, and a set of values, you know, and they're, they're sure. learning the skill. And it's a 1500 pound animal. You, you really got to respect it and you got to know what you're doing. So yeah. um, hats off to anybody who, uh, you know, loves horses and knows what they're doing around them. Cause I, I only play a cowboy on TV. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know much about them. Yeah, it is good. It definitely taught me a lot of my like work ethic and just responsibility. You have to be so responsible and it's a full-time gig, you know, like we had no big family vacations cause we had to take care of the horses. So um, yeah, it was a good way to grow up for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So for anybody that wants to know more about the, um, we are one world song, it's we are one world.net. Is that where? Yeah, that's the website. And, um, so I should mention we're raising money for uh, two or three specific, uh, things here. One is the, the red cross worldwide mm -hmm. and the other one is global citizen. The third one, of course, is a unison fund here in Canada that takes care of the music industry in times right. of, uh, 
um, you know, emergency, which is of course right now, nobody's touring. Um, but there's two ways you can do that. And one is by going to the website, weareoneworld.net. There are links right there, you can donate. Uh, the other one is uh, by participating in the challenge, like you said, uh, you can do the sign campaign where, uh, you know, just, just posting that picture of that sign helps get the word out. People go, what's this? And then maybe they can get involved. Uh, the other is taking part in the music challenge. So, you know, taking the song, making it your own, posting it. And the idea is the more it gets played on radio, the more it gets played on, on uh, internet, the more it gets streamed, all that stuff, uh, the more it's going to generate in royalties. And that, that's all being donated, 100%. So uh, the musicians, the artists have all, all donated their time. And um, it's, just a, it's just a wonderful message to send around the world. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you for putting that together and gathering your crew of people. And um, you can expect to see, I, I think I'll probably do the picture, but who knows, maybe I'll get brave and do a video. You never know. Maybe you know a guy who could play guitar, you know, and yeah. uh, you I'll know, try to find it. somebody. <laughs> Congratulations on the uh, you know upcoming nuptials. That's, a, that's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, we are super excited. We kind of got engaged and then in lockdown, so we didn't really get to celebrate much, but we will. <laughs> hey, guys, you know what? It's it's great because you get to spend time together. It's 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 a horrible thing. This this COVID thing is such serious business, and I'm so glad to see people are taking it seriously. But it helps us tap the brakes a little bit in life, right? And we get sure. to spend a little time we otherwise may not have. And yep. I wonder if we get we get the green light to get back to whatever normal is going to be. Hopefully, hopefully we don't just get busy for busy's sake, you know? Yep, absolutely. It's definitely made me put a lot of things into perspective that I maybe right. wouldn't have spent as much time thinking about before. So yeah. I feel that way too. All it's right. Well, hopefully I'll get to see you in real life sometime soon. But until yeah. then, thank you for doing this. And uh, we'll have to you know, catch up again soon. You bet. Thanks for helping to spread the word. No problem. All right. Bye, Jason. Bye-bye.